Thank you. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 1428 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revised business programme for today. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press the request to speak button now. Uh, I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 1428. Formally moved. Thank you. Uh, this motion uh, moves decision time today to 5.30. I apologise to members for the lack of uh, advance notice. This was raised and fully discussed at Bureau, and the inconvenience of this was uh, balanced against the fact that all members wish, a number of members wish to speak in the housing debate, and it would have been squeezed. Uh, the question is that motion number 1428, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed. Are we all agreed? We are agreed. The next item of business today is topical questions. I call question number one, Jamie Green. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to tackle homophobic bullying in schools in light of the recent survey by the Time for Inclusive Education Group. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Presiding Officer, bullying of any kind, including homophobic, biophobic, transphobic bullying, is unacceptable and must be addressed swiftly and effectively whenever it arises. It is the responsibility of head teachers, teachers, and other school staff and local authorities to decide on the specific actions to address cases of bullying in their schools. The Scottish Government established in Holy Funds Respect Me, a national bullying service to build confidence and capacity to address all types of bullying effectively, aligned to the national approach to anti-bullying in Scotland. Respect Me provide direct support to local authorities, schools, youth groups, and all those working with children and young people. It is jointly managed by the Scottish Association for Mental Health and LGBT Youth Scotland. The national approach to anti-bullying for Scotland's children and young people is currently being updated. This sets out a common vision and aims to make sure that work across all agencies and communities is consistently and coherently contributing to a whole school approach to anti-bullying in Scotland. LGBT Youth Scotland and Stonewall Scotland are part of the working group and the updated guidance will be published soon. Jamie Green. Uh, I thank the Minister for that response. I think clearly there is broad consensus across this place to uh, tackle this issue. But this survey paints a deeply worrying picture of uh, homophobic and transphobic bullying in Scotland, with 27% of respondents having attempted suicide and over 90% experiencing some sort of bullying, yet only 4% thought that the Scottish Government was doing enough. Will the government accept that the current approach simply is not enough? And will they commit to a change of tack on this? Mr Swinney. What I've set out, well, first, first things first, I, I agree with Mr Green on the point that um, bullying of any sort and uh, homophobic bu bullying is utterly repugnant and it must be tackled and addressed and confronted. Now, the government has put in place a range of different interventions that I set out in my original answer, uh, particularly around the establishment of Respect Me, which is designed to provide the resources, the materials, the information, and the capacity to equip schools to handle this particular issue. Now, the national approach to anti-bullying for Scotland's children and young people is, um, is, uh, has been in place since um, 2000 and. 10, uh, the work is being currently updated as part of the, uh, the review work that is undertaken to make sure it is effective and obviously we will consider carefully the issues that have been raised by the Time for Inclusive Education survey and the issues that the group has raised. I am in fact meeting the group in the course of the next few weeks and uh, I will listen carefully to the points that are advanced by the group but I can assure Mr Green that the government has every intention of ensuring that the measures we put in place are effective to address a situation which uh, clearly is causing uh, distress and anxiety to some young people in our society. Jamie Green. I thank the Minister for uh, his uh, clarity on that and his uh, intention to meet with the group that conducted the survey. Presiding officer, this report clearly highlights that we're not getting it right for every child. The current postcode lottery means that some schools are training teachers whilst others are not. And given that the majority of teachers polled in the survey feel that they have not been adequately trained to tackle LGBT issues in school, can I ask the government to say what specific it pl plans it has to address this issue with teacher training? Cabinet Secretary. The, 
there's a wide range of different interventions that we make to enhance the professional capability of teachers once they uh, are, are through the uh, teacher training qualifications and practicing within our schools. And the resources that I have raised there, particularly in relation to the national approach to anti-bullying for Scotland's children and young people, is the, the framework within which the various resources are put in place to enable this to happen. Um, Education Scotland has specific materials that are available for teachers to access and to utilise to, to ensure that they uh, are able to undertake the necessary development to uh, tackle these particular issues. And that, of course, fits into uh, a wider wellbeing agenda, which uh, I'm glad Mr Green referred to the importance of getting it right for every child, because as I made clear to Parliament last week, that will be the ethos, the vision with which I deploy my, that I will deploy my responsibilities as Education Secretary to ensure that whatever the circumstances and a perspective of young people in our, in our country, every single one of them is entitled to have their needs met by our services and particularly by our education services. So I hope that reassures Mr Green of the steps that the government is taking. But as I say, um, we have a framework in place which is currently being updated. And I will, of course, be very happy to uh, discuss with Parliament in due course once that update is complete, what further steps we can take to ensure that the circumstances highlighted in this survey are not experienced by any other young people in Scotland in the future. Thank you. Question number two, Andy Whiteman. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what plans it has to ensure the long-term future of mountain weather forecasting. Minister Aileen Campbell. Our clear priority is to ensure the long-term provision of critical mountain weather forecasting and ensure the future safety of all those who are active in Scotland's hills and mountains. The Mountain Weather Information Service has delivered an excellent service over the years and provided an accurate and essential service to all who use Scotland's mountains. Sport Scotland has been involved in discussions with the Met Office and with the Mountain Weather Information Service about building a resilient mountain weather forecast provision for Scotland. We are committed to ensuring that everyone can continue to receive these vital forecasts, building on the skills and expertise that are in the MWIS. In the short term, Sport Scotland and our officials will continue discussions with MWIS over the provision of their service whilst we develop a sustainable mountain weather forecast, recognising that this familiar and trusted forecast should be available to all who look to enjoy Scottish mountains and wild landscapes. My officials have spoken to Geoff Monk, who is the lead forecaster at the uh, MWIS, and this morning to ensure that we take account of the concerns being raised in order to find a long-term solution. I will be meeting Sports Scotland to discuss the ongoing developments and examine the provision of mountain weather forecasting to ensure that the concerns that are raised by um, uh, WIS are fully addressed. As part of this, I shall also be formally meeting with the Mountain Weather Information Service to ensure that they are part of the solution and that there is a long-term legacy of their fantastic service, which has undoubtedly saved lives and improved the safety for everyone who has enjoyed Scotland's wild landscapes. Andy Whiteman. Uh, the Minister will be aware, obviously, of the concern that's been expressed at the weekend, over the weekend at reports that Sport Scotland is to end funding of the Mountain Weather Information Service. As the Minister confirms, this is a service that's provided trusted, detailed forecasting for mountain users for 13 years, and Sport Scotland has funded it since 2007. It's a service that's trusted and relied upon by hundreds of thousands of users of Scotland's mountains every year. Yet across the outdoor community, there is confusion, confusion about its future and concerns over reports that it will end just as winter begins. Does the Minister agree that the safety and enjoyment of those who use Scotland's mountains is utterly dependent on accurate, reliable and above all trusted sources of weather forecasting? Will she confirm that Sports Scotland told MWIS that its funding would end on the 31st of December 2016? And does she agree with her predecessor, Sports Minister Stuart Maxwell, who applauds Jeff Monk and his colleagues for their selfless work in helping to ensure the safety of all those who make use of our wonderful natural environment. Minister. Um, I will happily put on record my thanks to the dedication and the commitment that has been shown over the last, over I think 13 years by Jeff Monk, who has been uh, providing an excellent service, who has uh, saved undoubtedly a number of lives with, through the work that he's done to accurately report and forecast the weather to allow people to enjoy Scotland's mountains and wild landscapes. We are having discussions around how we can ensure that we have a sustainable uh, mountain weather forecast 
and Jeff Monk and the expertise that he brings from MWIS will need to be part of those discussions. We have invested uh, significantly to make sure that people can go out and enjoy Scotland's wild landscapes and mountains safely and we'll make sure that we can continue that dialogue to ensure that that can continue into the future and make sure that people have that reassurance and comfort that when they go out and enjoy Scotland's wild landscapes that they're doing so safely with accurate weather and I think that's something that we all want to see happen and we'll continue uh, to make sure to engage with the member about how those, dialogue, how that, those discussions and that dialogue uh, progresses. Andy Wyman. Thank the Minister for that. <clears throat> Together with the Scottish Aval Avalanche Information Service, MWS has contributed to saving lives and providing more informed decision-making amongst walkers, mountaineers and skiers. Does she agree with the Mountaineering Council of Scotland, who on Sunday called for all parties to reconvene their dialogue to ensure that there is continuity, especially with the onset of winter, and that there should be a continuity in future for the daily production of Scottish mountain weather forecasts, which are publicly funded, available free to users, and which provide at least the same range of forecast features as MWIS? And will she answer my previous question to confirm whether Sport Scotland told MWIS that its funding would end on the 31st December 2016? Will she engage with the outdoor community to keep it informed, or will she commit to keeping Parliament informed of progress? Yes. I'll absolutely keep a ensure that members who have an expressed interest in this, in fact we all will have an, an interest in this because we'll all want people to go out and know that they are enjoying, they can enjoy the outdoors as safely as they can. We want to make sure that there is a sustainable way going forward to ensure that people get daily accurate uh, reports about the condition of the weather so that they can go out and use this mountain safely and we'll continue to have discussions and dialogue around the investment that needs to go in to provide in that. Um, and in terms of the avalanche uh, interest there, I'm happy again to meet with those people as well so that they can contribute their views into this uh, dialogue and ongoing discussion. But again, I'll place on record my thanks to Jeff Monk, who has shown complete commitment in providing a service which has undoubtedly saved a number of lives across the country. He brings with him expertise and knowledge that we should play all be uh, grateful for. And he and my officials are in discussions at the moment. I will meet with him uh, as well and meet with Sports Scotland to make sure that we can have a sustainable solution going forward to ensure the continued safety of people who are using Scotland's mountains. Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I think uh, the last two winters have certainly proven the value of this service and, and to take it away would put tens of thousands of those of us who enjoy an active outdoor lifestyle in an increased danger. Now, this service is funded through Sport Scotland, which in turn is funded through this government. So it's within the scope and the power of this government to safeguard this important service. And I ask the Minister, will they? Minister. I've, I've said a number of times that we want to ensure that there's a sustainable way in which we can forecast the weather so that people can go out and enjoy the mountains safely. The work and effort and dedication of the MWIS through Jeff Monk and others ha is something that we um, have put on, re I've put on record my, my gratitude to him and for his work. And we'll continue to work with him and others to find a sustainable way going forward. It's in our best interest to make sure that we have that long-term vision. But in the meantime, I uh, have said on the record in answer to Andy Whiteman that I'll be meeting with the Mountain Weather Information Service. I'll be meeting with Sports Scotland to discuss this issues and we'll make sure that we find a solution to some of the issues that have been raised and the concerns that have been raised by MWIS.